In this tutorial series, we'll show you two complete examples about using Antler, the parser generation tool. And first of all, I would like to make some assumptions and go over with you before you start going over the, uh, the tutorial videos. The assumptions would be, uh, number one, so I assume you actually, uh, you're comfortable with the Eclipse uh, IDE. We're gonna use it to actually for development and debugging purpose for the parser generation tool. And then I'm gonna go uh, just point to you where you should really find installation instruction for the Antler 4 tool. It's very easy to do for any platform. And also in addition to it, I want you to also download an additional jar file, which is part of the installation. I want you to duplicate it on your desktop, okay? A jar file, I'll also show you where to find it. And for further references, uh, this tutorial series is really meant to give you uh, some not so trivial examples, but simple uh, for you to get started and understand all the core features. But there are certain many features uh, that are still missing from this, to uh, this tutorial series. I would like you to find further. And you can either go to the website, I'm going to point to you uh, in just a moment, and also uh, there's also a book on the definitive guide on Antler 4. You can definitely start with these two references to complete your assignments or to comp uh, complete your projects. Hey, let me first of all go to the uh, website for Antler. So you can simply go to www.antler.org. Okay, if you go to the website, you can see there's a quick star over here, this section here. Depending on what uh, the platform is your home machine, you can either uh, find out the installation guide for OS X, and also you can find for Linux, you can also find for Windows, okay? In all the cases, uh, you are required to download a file, uh, which is a Java file for Java. And at the moment, the current version is 4.8. Make sure you download that version there. When you install, you, you have to put this Java file into one of the library folders. Okay, let me just go uh, over the one for Mac, since I'm, myself, I'm using Mac. But for Windows, it's the same idea. Let me switch to Mac here. You can see for the installation, it's going to store by default into your uh, local lib. Of course, you have to set your uh, environmental path uh, for the uh, class path accordingly. Okay, just run through the installation and then I want you to also download this particular jar file for me, okay? And put it on the desktop. All you gotta do is CD to your desktop and then just run this particular command again, okay? In addition to uh, installing to your library. And then I assume that you're going to have uh, this particular jar file on your desktop, okay? I'm gonna use it. And then also you have an empty workspace for the Eclipse on your desktop maybe. Okay, so that's about the uh, website for Antler, and then there are many uh, resources uh, that you can find on this particular website. Okay, I'm gonna leave it to you. You can go to uh, the book, and also you can go to uh, also documentation uh, for Antler. Okay, I'll let you find out. And also there are tons of resources, uh, also about troubleshooting, also on the web, uh, on Google. So you can just Google uh, any problem you might have or get in touch with me. Okay, so now let's go back to Eclipse, assuming that you're opening Eclipse on this particular empty workspace, okay? I would like to just create a two projects that's gonna be uh, uh, completed by, by the end of the uh, tutorial series. First of all, let me create a first Java project, okay? Both are Java projects. Let's say file, and depending on which Eclipse you're using, you may not have this icon here directly, so I'll follow the safe choice. So file new, and then Java projects. And then let's see the first one. I would say antler example and also visitor, okay? So this visitor here refers to the visitor design pattern that you learned in the previous software design course. So you may actually want to review about it, the visitor pattern architecture, also the program basics. I'm just gonna mention a little bit about it uh, in the tutorial. Okay, and then you're gonna create this particular Java projects, okay, there's one over here. Okay, let me create a second one. And then we gotta do some initial setup before we can start coding. And then file, Java projects. And now I'm gonna do antler, example, the same prefix, but now it's gonna be action. So the action here simply means action grammar, meaning that later on when we uh, define our grammar for antler to, to generate, the grammar itself has itself attached with uh, coding actions, okay? But you will see exactly what I meant uh, a little bit later when we get there. Okay, so let's create this particular project here. So these are the two projects that we're going to focus on for the rest of the tutorial series. 
And now I want to set up something that's common to both of these two projects. Okay, and now we have to use this particular job file. Okay, so I will simply go to my workspace. Remember, these are the two empty projects we just created. For both cases, I would like to do the following. Okay, I would like to create a folder called lib. Okay, standing for library. So for example, I go to the action one. Okay, and then I would say maybe just at the same level as bin and source. So all your Java source will go here, and also all the class file will go here. Okay. So I'll simply say new folder, and then I will say lib, okay? And then go to the lib, and then you can simply just copy this particular job file and paste it here, okay? So you got all, this is the only job file you would need to run Antler, uh, the tool. Okay, I'm gonna copy this particular library folder over here, and then I'm going to paste it to another project. Okay, so that's a visitor project and paste it. Okay, the same lib. And then I'm going to go back to my Eclipse. Of course, I need to refresh for both of them. Okay, and then I'll say refresh. And now you can see under both of these projects, you got a lip over here. Okay, so now let's set up the build path for both projects, the same. So I will simply right click on the first project here. And then I would say build path. And then go to configure build path. And once you go there, uh, first step, you go to libraries and then add jobs, that's a part one, okay? And then let's say for uh, this particular, since we're doing action first, right? So you simply click on the lip, expand it, and then choose the Antler 4.8, the current version, and then say, okay. And then that's a part A. Part B, go under source over here, expand the project source, and then click on this native library location. Double click on that, and now you want to select the lib folder. And now I will simply say it's in my workspace. So I will simply go to the lib, uh, just the lib. Okay, that's all you gotta do. And say, okay. Okay, so now it's Antler example action, the first project and then lib. And then I'll say, okay. Okay, everything's good and then apply and close. Okay, that's done for the first project. Let's do the second one very quickly and then you can do it as well. I will say right click and then build path and then configure build path. Go under libraries, add jobs, and then, so now I need a second project, and then go to its lib folder and choose Antler 4.8, and then say okay. And then I would, oh, and then part B, go to source, expand the source folder, and click on native library location. And now workspace, under lib, okay, just lib, and then choose okay. And then you can see it's a different project lib, right? Just relative to the project we are talking about. Say okay, and then apply and close. Okay, so now both projects have been set up properly. Okay, so now I would say, before you proceed to the next tutorial video, in which we'll start building the Antler uh, input file for the grammar specification for both parser and lexer, uh, tokens and grammar. Before that, I would suggest make sure you really uh, have things set up over here. Uh, as I mentioned before, the assumption, right? You got all these set up. And as soon as you actually set up the installation, oh, let me just double check one thing together with you, okay? If, how do you check to see if you have got installation uh, installation successful, okay? You should be able to run the following command line tool, okay? Just make sure they're available on your command line. In the case of Mac, I'll simply open a new terminal and then Okay, we're gonna use the two commands later, but let me just make sure they really exist on your computer. If I say Antler 4, okay, so that tells me I should really supply the flag, but that's at, at least it's uh, it does exist in my machine. I'm gonna show you exactly how to use it. So Antler 4 is gonna be the command we're gonna use to generate a uh, parser and lexer. And then we got another one, which is also very important for debugging purposes. It's called grunt. Okay, grun is basically for you to debug your grammar and uh, and draw parse tree automatically for you, which is pretty cool. Okay, and make sure you also you, if you say grun again, it will just tell you uh, something like this, telling you you should really supply some options for the grun, but at least it does exist on your system path. Okay, make sure grun and also Antler four both exist on your system, and it should be there as a consequence of uh, installing following the uh, quick start over here. Okay, make sure everything's there and then you can move on to the next tutorial video.